the more I've gotten into horror films, there's something that has always stuck out to me, and it's all the women featured in horror. This idea became more prominent when the gothic horror genre became more mainstream. These films typically include some monster or supernatural character and a prominent female lead. In the 1970s, gothic horror began to be recognized by its scream queens. Some early examples would be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Alien, and of course, Halloween. After reading Men, Women, and Chainsaws by Carol Clover, she referred to these girls as the final girls. Let's think about a typical horror film. Who is typically the lone survivor at the end? It's almost always a female. But what characteristics makes this girl a final girl? In Clover's words, she refers to the final girl being a male surrogate. Therefore, the final girl must have some sort of masculine characteristics in order to defeat the monster or terror that they are dealing with. But how can a female be both feminine and masculine? According to Webster's Dictionary, the term bisexual actually has two definitions. The first one is possessing characters of both sexes and especially both male and female reproductive structures. And two, of relating to or characterized by sexual or romantic attractions to both men and women. It's a term that is often repressed in our patriarchal society because the morally acceptable way is believing that everyone is one gendered and must be attracted to someone of the opposite gender. A person can't be both. However, I believe horror films defy this repression and manage to make an entire genre centered around a female with both feminine and masculine traits. In Robin Wood's essay, The American Nightmare, Horror in the 70s, there are five main terms associated with masculinity. Activeness, aggression, self-assertion, organizational power, and creativity itself. These five terms work with almost every final girl that appears in horror, from classic gothic films like Halloween's Lori to modern-day indies like Midsummer's Danny. Focusing on these two films in particular, they both show feminine and masculine traits. Common feminine traits often include being nurturing and emotional. These traits can be seen in both Lori and Danny. Starting with Lori, she is babysitting Tommy and Lindsay for her friends Annie and Linda. This shows her nurturing side because she is willing to watch over her friend's siblings. Her, I'll consider talking to Ben Tramer in the morning. Deal. <laughs> Later on in the film, she shows extreme emotion when she realizes her friends are dead because of the man who has been stalking her killed them both. Looking at Danny, she shows her nurturing side when she's asking a mother of the tribe about how the children are raised in the tribe. The babies are raised here by everyone. Wow. You want this? And she also does domestic things like cooking and cleaning. As for her extreme emotion, let's just say it's shown a lot throughout this film. Moving on to masculine traits, we're going to take the five terms Wood discussed and apply them to Lori and Danny. Let's take it back to 1978, when the first Halloween movie came out. Halloween is more of a classic rendition of A Final Girl, where Laurie represents more of a damsel in distress because of how film ends with Dr. Loomis saving her. However, up until that point, she does convey the five masculine characteristics that Wood discussed previously in his essay. In terms of activeness, Laurie knows that there is a problem when she doesn't hear back from Linda or Annie. So she takes initiative to go investigate the situation. Help! In terms of aggression, Lori frantically runs through the neighborhood begging for help. And she goes as far as to stab Michael Myers. In self-assertion, this hasn't really been Lori's fight to begin with because Michael is going after Annie and Linda. So she asserts herself into a problem that she shouldn't be dealing with anyways. In terms of organizational power, Lori manages to take the children, Tommy and Lindsay. And keep them out of harm's way. And finally, with creativity itself, Lori goes as far as to protect Tommy and Lindsay's innocence by informing them that Michael is just another boogeyman. Look at the boogeyman. I'm scared. There's nothing to be scared of. Are you sure? Which takes a lot of creativity to think of when you're put under pressure. With this, that makes Lori an approved final girl. She meets all the masculine characteristics to make her a male surrogate. Moving to a more present-day horror film, Midsummer, directed by Ari Aster, he took the final girl concept and completely reshaped it. In his earlier film, Hereditary, he literally took Clover's words of a male surrogate and applied it to this film by making Peter the surrogate for a demon prince, Payman, which was within Charlie the entire film. 
However, it doesn't technically end with a final girl. Therefore, we're going to focus on Midsummer, his more recent film that came out in the summer of 2019. When you're first introduced to Danny, she is struggling with the loss of her sister and parents. Her boyfriend, Christian, invites her on a trip with some of his friends, and throughout this trip, Danny is able to show all five masculine characteristics. Starting with activeness, Danny asserts herself in all the tribe traditions, from cooking. What are we making here? Meat tarts. Oh, wow. All the way to dancing. In terms of aggression, Danny is constantly arguing with her boyfriend throughout the entire trip. Well then, I, well, then I'm sorry. I'm so, I just got confused. I'm sorry. I, hey, please, come on. Can you come? Just can you Stop. come and sit with me, please? By the end, she's given the choice to either sacrifice her ex-boyfriend Christian or another volunteer from the tribe itself. It is traditional that our fair queen shall choose between a pre-selected new blood and a specially ordained horga. In terms of self-assertion, Danny manages to convince her boyfriend to let her go on the trip with them when she wasn't no, even invited to begin with. Ruining your guys' plans. Oh, no, 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 no. For organizational power, she literally becomes the Harvest Queen to this tribe that she knows absolutely nothing about. She becomes a part of their family. And with creativity itself, she manages to take a tough situation, the death of all of her friends, and makes light of it as she realizes that her new family is unified behind her. Therefore, Danny is an approved final girl. She meets all the masculine characteristics to make her a male surrogate. The cultural repression of bisexuality has slowly become more in the conscious of the mind rather than the unconscious the minute Final Girls came to light on the silver screen. Horror films have given the strength to the female gender through these strong female characters. In a way, it's something that we should become more aware of as a society. Horror films were created as a means to elect fear towards its audience, but it was also a way to give women strength. It throws a curveball into society's capitalist, patriarchal ideologies with these powerful final girls. Keep this list in mind, because the real strength that a final girl has may be the biggest scare of the film.